So for this segment, this one won't be as long as the last one, but let's talk about the Top Gear Golden Trio, the original gang, Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, James May. So for those of you that don't know, if you're living under a rock, you can go on to Drive Tribe to find all kinds of recent history, modern content that's being produced that includes the original gang. Whether it's um, James May cooking, which makes me want to do cooking videos and tell stories like how he does. You've got behind the scenes stuff or storytelling stuff with, you know, all three of them. Jeremy talking about cars he regrets selling. Um, James May talking about experiences with their trips and him talking about his gin that he's selling. Richard Hammond you know, going into detail about his experience of getting injured and how he recovered from it and some really, really interesting details. Um, lots of awesome stuff, you know, some extra footage of Jeremy talking about his farm and how he's been doing, Richard and his endeavors with his automotive shop, um, James with all of his little extra projects. You know, James has become kind of a natural YouTuber in his own niche way. He's not like an ordinary YouTuber, but he's very kind of cathartic to watch, which I would say is the best way to describe it. It's He's very kind of entertaining in a relaxing sort of way. So check out Drive Tribe. Obviously, also, the other presenters on Drive Tribe, beyond the original Top Gear trio, are also very charismatic and very entertaining and very informative. So you want to check them out as well. Don't sell them short and just assume they're not as entertaining. They are also very entertaining. They've got that classic dry British humor and um, very fun to watch. But obviously, also, the boys are there as well. Like, um, you've also got James May roasting YouTuber cars, roasting their Hellcat Charger they had. I didn't even know you could bring those into the UK, but I also get the impression it's a lot easier to import cars into the UK than it is to the US because the land of the free and also lots of red tape and lobbying <laughs> to make things like grey market cars much more difficult to obtain. There's a good video of Hammond and May playing chess while drinking gin and just having good banter. There's videos of James and his, um, his pub that he's running or is a shareholder of co-owner of. Obviously there's the Grand Tour. They're still making content. They're not following the original formula anymore um, where they do the news show, talk show, and then their adventures and car reviews. Now it is just basically every episode is a special. But it's still all very cool and very entertaining. The most recent one being, as of this recording, the Scandi Flick. So check that out on Amazon Prime. Never thought I would say that promoting Amazon, but it's where they are, so you gotta watch it. But it does kind of make me want to do a, a road trip of, of my own someday. Do some kind of challenge. Like do a big road trip. Like I'm a truck driver, so I'm used to doing lots and lots of miles. Like I could do 3,000 miles in a week without really blinking. So maybe I should do something like that in some kind of cool sports car. I don't know, let me, you know what you, let me know what you guys think. I've, you know, I could get like an E92 M3, build it up to be a bootleg GTS, drive that from San Francisco to New York. I bet you know what that's a reference to. I could wrap that in Lark Pink. Um, which was recently released and developed by Inoza Tech and Daily Driven Exotics. So that would be really cool to see. It's a, a great recreation of the original McLaren color. Lots of cool stuff with the Top Gear Trio online. So uh, check it out if you haven't seen it already. And uh, let me know what you guys think. And, you know, if you've got any suggestions for what I could do from classic Top Gear, like challenges or this and the other, budget car challenges, road trips, or whatever, let me know. I have some ideas already that are actually original that I might do first, but if you got any ideas, let me know. So, um, I can imagine a lot of people watching this show prefer older cars, naturally aspirated, big displacement, powerful V8s, V10s, and V12s, obviously loud, shouty race cars and things like that. So let's go over some cool cars that have been covered by some awesome YouTube channels that can't be built anymore today because they wouldn't pass the stringent emissions regulations pretty much anywhere. But that's why the used market is so cool. So let's start off with the 840 horsepower, 7.7 .7 liter V12 powered TVR Cerbera Speed 12. This is a car I didn't even realize you could get footage of. They're super rare. They're non-existent online. Most of the footage you find are of replicas and things like that, but Drive Tribe managed to find one. I don't know how. And the owner of this car at the time of Drive Tribe's recording 
uh, was planning on selling their original Speed 12 because they had actually made a near one-to-one -one replica of, with which they feel less ashamed of driving because obviously if you've got a, a real Speed 12, you're going to be kind of hesitant to drive it because it's one of a kind. You don't really want to ruin it, understandably. But if you've got a replica that basically gives you the same experience, you know, you feel more comfortable with driving it, which I totally get. And you can get some good money by selling it because it is one of a kind. It's amazing. You know, TVRs, it's, it's a shame because I wish they were still making TVRs today, but I think they got sold to Russian ownership, which um, these days they're kind of doomed to be stuck in limbo for reasons I'm not going to talk about. But yeah, um, but TVRs are really cool. And the Speed 12, I've got to say, is the automotive manifestation of the word murderous. Just the angles, the fins, the aerodynamics, the exhaust, that engine. I love classic British race cars and supercars. They're super special and super cool. They might not be massively reliable, because uh, that's what I'm always told when I'm talking about Aston Martins and things like that, which we'll talk about in a second. But man, there is nothing else like TVRs. Just nothing. And it look, just check out the video. I had never even seen or heard one running before on video, in person, whatever, it doesn't matter. But kind of more attainable, uh, the next car I'm gonna talk about, the Aston Martin V12 Vantage. Now, I personally prefer the last generation of the V12 Vantage, like the V12 Vantage S, more so than the modern one. I think it looks better, I think it's more charismatic, I think the engine has more character for obvious reasons, it's naturally aspirated, and I think it's just inherently beautiful. I know it's that's a subjective thing, but I just think it's beautiful. I think it's better looking, I think it is um, actually more akin to a work of art. Uh, most modern cars, you can't really say that. Most modern cars are very engineered to be, be performance oriented. They're a lot less focused on aesthetics. They're a lot less focused on character. They don't have as much personality. And um, you know, just it's a completely different experience. It's more kind of functionality focused, which there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but it is a shame that we have made that transition which is bringing us further and further into the world of EVs where suddenly everything is about function and nothing is about fun. But, you know, we knew they were going away anyways. As far back as when, you know, the V12 Vantage first was released and Jeremy Clarkson was driving it and he made this beautiful piece of automotive television, automotive journalism. Cars like this will soon be consigned to the history books. It is, you know, he was basically saying goodbye to the car maybe 10 years early. Um, but yeah, he was right. Cars like that are going extinct. The, the writing was on the wall. Uh, it's it's a real shame. Obviously there's the used market, but the, the whole thing with that is that because they won't be building more cars like that, eventually there's just not gonna be support for those cars. Manufacturers are gonna stop building OEM parts for replacement and repairs and maintenance. And the aftermarket, depending on the car you're talking about, might just be non-existent even when they're brand new. So I guess that's one argument for being a collector and not driving your cars is at least you can keep them in pristine condition and then, you know, have it be like a museum piece to be like, look at this. Back in the day, they built stuff like this and now they can't. And it's a shame, but here it is in the flesh for you, for you to appreciate even if it can't run because I've just been letting it sit here to more or less rot. It's just polished on the outside. So there's an argument for that. But also check out these uh, these body kits for, you know, my favorite generation of the Vantage. I think they look really cool. You know, a, a GT3 style Aston Martin V12 Vantage would be really cool on the street. I don't know if um, many people would find that appealing. I think a lot of people would rather keep it stock because it's very, very pretty. And, you know, if you start messing with the lines and the fenders and things, it could really screw it up. 